Hey, this is Dino, and today I want to talk with you about a pattern that I see customers using pretty commonly and give you a demonstration of how it will work. That pattern is externalized authorization rules and connecting Apigee with that externalized uh, API authorization rule set. Um, as you all know, the Apigee API platform does lots of interesting things. One of the things that it provides is a configurable smart proxy service, a gateway. In many cases, uh, the Apigee gateway is used to enforce authorization policies for an enterprise. So inbound API call comes in and Apigee is responsible for implementing an authorization decision, implementing. Uh, should we or should we not allow the call in and then proxy it to an upstream system? Uh, so there's a distinction between implementing the rule and uh, having the rule, deciding the rule. Apigee may not be the best place to encode the rules in a case where you've got lots of different APIs uh, and lots of different ways that an API might be authorized. You may wish to externalize that authorization rule set in an external uh, database table or some other system. Connect Apigee to that external rule set and then have Apigee implement the decision uh, in the API proxy. So this is a demonstration that shows how to do that. I've got a GitHub repo uh, that includes all the code uh, that walks you through it um, and uh, a readme that describes what's going on. So the demonstration um, shows you an API proxy that receives a request, calls to an external authorization service, reads permission rules, and then evaluates those permissions and implements that decision on a given request. Uh, this particular implementation uh, uses a Google Sheet to store the authorization rules. And you might think, well, does that make sense? Is that a good thing, a good way to store these rules? At first, maybe that seems uh, a little cute. But to me, a Google Sheet uh, may be a great way to store authorization rules. The table metaphor in a spreadsheet is a really clean way to represent allow and deny rules. Um, the API for a Google Sheet is available just out of the box. It's already built. You don't have to do anything. Uh, it's documented. It works really well, very scalable. It's easy for operators to read and update the rules in the web UI. Uh, rollback is included. Audit is included. The costs are low. Um, so basically, it's a, it's a really nice fit uh, from in some regards. Uh, you still may not be comfortable with that, and that's fine. I'm not trying to advocate using a Google Sheet for storing authorization rules. Uh, the main idea is the pattern of externalizing the authorization rules and allowing Apigee to call out to an external authorization system. So um, for the rest of the demo, I'm gonna show you how Apigee can connect to a, a rule set stored in a Google Sheet, but just replace that with any other system and it'll work just the same way. For this repository, I have uh, some instructions for provisioning this for yourself. So you can go clone this repo uh, and do all of this all of what I'm about to show you, you can do it yourself, um, and it should work just fine for you. There are some, there are two things, classes of things that you need to provision. One is Google Cloud Things, including the Google Sheet and a service account that it can access that spreadsheet. Uh, and then secondly, your Apigee specific things like proxies and shared flows. Um, so the, the way you can set up the Google Cloud stuff is primarily through the Google Cloud SDK or command line interface. You can also do this via the UI, going to cloud. Uh, so console.cloud.google.com, um, set up a project, uh, and um, enable some APIs, create a service account, and um, download the service account credentials. You can do all that in the user interface as well. It may be easier to do it with a G Cloud um, SDK. I've already done that for my workstation, uh, so I won't be repeating that here, but I will show you how to create the sheet uh, and uh, provision the Apigee assets. So let's walk through that now. Um, I have, um, I have a, um, a directory here where I've cloned that repo. I'm going to CD into the tools directory. And first thing I need to do is run npm install. So the prerequisite is it does require node. These tools do require node and npm to install the modules. Once I've done that, uh, I can, I can uh, run the command that 
Um, uh, that creates the sheet. So that's the command I want to run. And what it's telling me is uh, I'm going to have to authorize this sheet to, uh, or this script to create a new sheet. Uh, and I'll get the OAuth2 uh, sign in from Google, from Google Cloud, uh, to allow this to work. Uh, this um, is, it's important that you read through this um, and make sure you trust this script. It is uh, granting access to the script to um, create a sheet. Uh, and then read the sheet that is created. I promise that I've only created this, this script to create just one um, sheet, so it should be pretty benign. As part of the OAuth, um, there's a code that we get, and I need to paste that in here into my uh, terminal session. Once that happens, the script is able to create the sheet, and the next tab I see open will be the sheet. So what have I got here? These are the rules. And really, I think of this as a, uh, each rule as a, a tuple or a combination of three things, the role, the resource, and the desired action, and then the answer, which is whether we want to allow that rule or not. So it's an allow, deny, binary decision. And um, just for the purposes of the demonstration, I've showed uh, roles uh, as the, the subject or actor in this case. It doesn't need to be a role, it could be a user could be user-based access control, it could be something else. Um, but we've got a role, a resource. In this case, the resource is always, in a simple rule set, it's always um, a, the same path. Uh, obviously, you can, you can modify this to be whatever you want. And then the actions are just HTTP verbs. Um, and I've got a, um, the, the four kind of big verbs set here for each. Uh, different role. Um, so for the employee, they're going to be able to do get, put, post, but not delete. Uh, admin can do all of those things. A partner can only do a post um, and so on. So those are the rules that I've kind of set up here. Um, and that's um, the sheet gets created automatically. The next thing I need to do is um, just kind of following along. I need this uh, to be a shell variable. So I'm going to grab that sheet ID. And also it says share that sheet with this email. So this is the email that I need, and I'm going to go back into that sheet and share it using this button. So just paste in that email. I don't need to send a message. I do need to click the confirm button, and it's going to say, hey, uh, are you sure? Uh, you definitely have to confirm that. So once it's shared, then Apogee, using those service account credentials, will be able to read these rules. OK, so continuing on with the uh, provisioning, uh, next thing we want to do is set a few other um, uh, shell uh, variables. So we've got the sheet ID, we've got the organization and the environment. And then what I want to do is set up, um, provision all the Apogee assets. So I'll run that script. And um, what it's doing is using the Apogee administrative API to create um, a key value map and populate it to... Uh, import and deploy a couple of shared flows and to import and deploy a couple of proxies as well. All that's happening automatically. You can see it just took a couple uh, couple seconds. So now if I go back to the proxy list in this organization, you'll see the top two proxies are the ones that I just uh, imported. And let me just walk you through this. Pretty simple. This Cloud Sheets ABAC proxy, um, it... Um, accepts an inbound request on get permission. And when it receives that, uh, it's going to call out to a shared flow called get ABAC rules. That shared flow is the thing that actually calls into the spreadsheet. And then there's a second um, interesting policy that it's just JavaScript. That's just evaluating the ABAC rules or the, um, the perhaps attribute-based access control, if you want to think of it that way, role-based and so on. So pretty simple. Um, maybe a little more elaborate is the, um, the shared flows. So the get ABAC rules um, is the thing that's going to call out to the sheet. Um, it's also not super complicated. Uh, basically what it does is um, uh, just calls out with a, a service call out to the sheets API on a certain path. Um, the interesting thing here is it does need a bearer token, and these prior steps are just how it gets the bearer token to call out to 
um, to the app to the Google Sheet uh, service. So what we'll do now is just um, so that's the shared flow that this this API proxy calls. We'll turn on trace and maybe give it a shot. So I can I can now um, invoke the uh, the API proxy from within my um, my terminal, and you can see I passed in three inputs: um, a role, an action, and a resource. And basically, these three inputs, all as query parameters, are being used by that API proxy to look up in this table the role, the resource, and the action, and return uh, just the binary decision. And if I look at the trace, that's exactly what happened. You can see it took about 400 milliseconds to do this, and that is because um, that, that's a long time. Uh, you're not going to see that every time in this implementation. The first thing it's got to do is go get a token for for Google Sheets, and then it's got to call the Google Sheet thing. So then it's subsequent. All that stuff gets cached. The subsequent request, uh, if I run that again, uh, will give me the same result, but it'll happen much more quickly because it's all using just cached information. So that just took um, eight milliseconds. And if I run this repeatedly. Even if I change the the input, so let's say uh, instead of partner or instead of employee, I want to use the partner role. Uh, I can pass that in, and it says, "Oh, the allowed um, answer is false on that." And yeah, all that's much faster. So four four milliseconds, three milliseconds to make that decision, uh, going through all those uh, steps. So that's really interesting um, pattern that we're seeing here with um, externalizing the authorization rules. So. Um, that's the that's the main idea. Um, you can then modify these rules if you like. You can add to these rules. You can modify the resource name, obviously, and use this from your own um, API proxy uh, for explorations and tests uh, and evaluation, if you like. Um, lots of different uh, options. Another idea is extending it to perhaps uh, have some automated. Uh, mechanism that updates the rules and maybe even um, puts a, not just a binary allow or deny, but a score in that rule set, uh, and uh, or maybe a dynamic quota, a quota that flexes over time. So that's something you can do as well. And Apogee could be um, the thing that executes or implements that um, enforces that dynamic quota. So really interesting idea, I think. Um, the next, uh, the last thing you might want to do is clean up some of these things. So I'll just uh, go through that now. I can um, turn all this off, uh, just stop the trace session, uh, and then deprovision things just by running the the same provisioning script with a dash r option, and uh, it'll go down and tear. Oops, it'll tear everything down. I think what I want is not the example user, but the, my own username. It'll tear everything down. And uh, that's about it for today. So what did I show you? I showed you um, a pattern for externalizing API authorization rules from Apigee and allowing Apigee to call into that external rule set and enforce those authorization decisions inside the API proxy. I uh, hope this is helpful. Check out the repo. Um, ask on community.apogee.com if you've got any questions uh, and keep it digital.